and we're back. New setup, new design, you know what I'm saying? Which I'm, y'all messing with it? Y'all not? I don't really care. Nah, I'm lying. I'm sorry. I mean, talk like that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I didn't talk to you like that. My bad. <laughs> but you see, this is Mushoko Tensei now. Yes, really. I guarantee you, bro's talking about season two. He got ED. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I guess red hair does something to you, you know, um, especially after it leaves you depressed, just dips out, leaves you a note in its hair, but hey, I ain't here to disrespect, bro, uh, we can go ahead and get in this video, like, comment, subscribe, you know what I'm saying, all the rest, social media is right there, you know what I'm saying, may as well go ahead and follow and subscribe, that's all I got, Now you lying, all I will look at at least, um, um, what y'all think about TikTok ban on the way? Personally, I'll just let my app get banned. I know it's money gone, lost, but if I invest the rest of that money into something else, it'd be smart. Cause, hey man, I wouldn't let this country get their hands on it. <sighs> I'll be honest with you. Mishoku Tensei season one was like, Whoa. oh God, it's so beautiful. Oh God, it's so high. And now season two was like, all right, let's see what Rudius is getting up to now. How's it going? My name is Otis Never Soft again, and recently I was diagnosed with erectile dysfunction. <laughs> oh. No. He ain't getting up to anything. Are you waiting to receive my limp penis? When you've watched anime for a long enough time, you start to think you've seen it all. The same tropes, the same plot developments. It starts to become Why rare for a series to explore something you haven't seen some iteration before. So color me surprised when Mishoku Tensei returns, coming off the back of introducing one of the most immersive worlds and genre-defining stories in Isekai to go, hey, Wanna see what happens when the hero can't get his PP hard? Doesn't work. We've had some banger anime this year exploring some pretty unique topics. Oshinoko highlighting the darker sides Why? of the entertainment industry. What's Hell's that? Paradise introducing us to a beautiful but deadly world. Zone 100 giving that. us the joyous I fantasy every wage slave needs. Mashal, Heavenly Delusion. I'm about to try and convince you all that a guy attempting to get a hard on for 12 episodes tops all that. But before that, a word from today's sponsor. Guys, did you know that one out of 10 men are likely to suffer from erectile dysfunction over the course of their lives? You may feel like there's nowhere to turn to but thanks to today's sponsor Ochinchin Tensei boneless reincarnation that's a thing of the past Yes. God, yes. I wish that were actually real. All right, let's do the real sponsor. Raycon, today's actual sponsor. Hey, Guys, Raycon. if you've been on YouTube before, you've probably yeah. heard of Raycon, but did you know that that's the entire one who has the power of the everyday alien space? self prepared to bite. Choker Tensei introduced a place to oh, one of the oh, Raycon, okay, okay. and with that said, back to the video. Two years ago, Mishoku Tensei introduced us to one of the most immersive worlds I've ever seen in anime. It was a beautiful, carefully crafted place rich with lore and history that was full of life. This wasn't just an isekai by name, it gave us a new world you felt you could truly get transported to, complemented with character writing that filled the place up with people that felt as alive as this world did. Seeing Rudy's journey through the world truly felt like you were going on an adventure with him, I getting swept up in the places he went to and the people he encountered, so much so that when yeah, that part of the journey came to an end, you felt as empty as he did, leaving us off with him learning some harsh lessons as he starts his next phase of life. It was a magical journey, so season two had some big shoes to live up to. What adventures was Rudy gonna go on now? What new places were we gonna visit? What new world-shattering developments were we gonna see? Dick not work. Yes, if you haven't heard, the writer made the brave decision to make Ooh. Rudy dealing with erectile dysfunction Ooh. a sizable plot thread to the entire season. And I've actually seen people pretty split about it. So I'm here to argue that this arc not only encapsulates everything that Mishoku it Tensei is about, important. but why, memes Dark aside, I still enjoyed the hell out of it. <sighs> here I am. I've reached important. a point in my career where I'm somehow arguing for erectile dysfunction. I think this my anime list review <laughs> sums it up pretty well. If you're too busy to read the whole summary, here are two points for my review. Bad animation. Bad arc. 7 out of 10. <laughs> What? Now, granted, I know going to my anime list for serious reviews is like asking crypto bros for financial advice, but these are pretty much the sentiments I've seen floating around. So, let's tackle this. First point. 
Bad animation. Mushoku Tensei Season 1 was an absolute animation masterclass in almost every department. And there was a lot of fears from fans going into the season because some of the key staff members in charge of making it look this good was moving on to other projects. And to be fair, it is a slight downgrade. It isn't polished to the point of being the cinema quality pierce the resistance the first season was, but bad? Congratulations, we've downgraded from the Last of Us remake on PlayStation 5 to The Last of Us on PlayStation 4. We might have experienced a new oh. season of anime that's felt like it's had a drop in quality before, but if this is bad animation, Seven Deadly Sins fans are on goddamn suicide watch. <laughs> they aren't already. Considering so the production old. of this took half the time and we didn't have to wait three more years in between seasons, I am more than happy if this is going to be the quality going forward, because Mishoku Tensei was never just about the amazing animation. Which brings me to the next point. Bad arc. To this topic, I'd like to talk about how to fix Nip mode. All right, this one might take a little longer. Obvious PP memes aside, I think a big turn off people have had is that there just weren't a lot of major hey. developments. This was a season that really slows things down and takes some time to explore its own characters. There are some new interesting lore drops that set things up for future events, but like Vinland, so this is rough. He, he's making it very hard to defend the season, and the season isn't even done yet. Part two drops in April for twelve episodes. I can't even. I, I can't. Saga earlier this year, the pacing crawled to a standstill in favor of Rudy living his life as a young adult now and being more flaccid than Oedipus waking up in an orphanage. But while Villain Saga already proved that you can completely change things up and turn into a slow paced character drama and people can still come out of it acknowledging that it's a goddamn masterpiece. So what's the difference? Well, Thorfinn's character arc never led to this. But I would argue that this slower paced approach to storytelling has always been what sets this show apart from everything else. Mishoku Tensei does- Why? Hey. Y'all need to leave Rudy alone. I'm fighting for Ro. He's making it very difficult, but I'm trying. I'm trying my hardest, okay? doesn't have the cool philosophical lines or a main character you want to go off and brag about, but what it does have is a story that feels so innately real it's almost uncanny. Events and time progression play out in a similar pace you'd expect them to in life. Episode by episode, you don't think much happens, but you know how if you see someone every day you don't really Plus notice any change with them? And then one day you look back to a picture of what they looked like five years ago and it's like, what? What? When the fuck did Rudy become a ripped no. teenager? Characters react and treat each other like people, real people. Every single person, regardless of if they give you a hundred lines or two, give you a sense that they're on their own personal journey as meaningful as Rudy's is. It's this commitment to realism that makes it such a joy just to be in this world, meaning even the smallest developments or character actions hold far more weight than they usually would. What would need to happen in a man's life to learn how to forgive? What happens when you're so hung up on an ex that even your dick stops listening to you? It's embarrassing, it's awkward, it's so Early isn't cool, but that's exactly why it seems so oddly realistic in a way few shows could get away with, because it was so on point for a person like Rudy. Rudius has certainly been a divisive character for anyone watching the show. He's done many things to turn a lot of people off, which very much continues all the way through to the second season. So if you're yeah. one of those people that find it morally reprehensible seeing a guy act like this and you can't fully invest yourself when this guy is meant to be the protagonist of the story, understandable. Have a nice day. Season two's not going to change your mind. Rudy is perverted, he's weird, he's downright creepy, but let's be real. Do you really think that a previously I mean, that, shut that, in him- expect? That's the guy who's inside this character. Or who is this character now. Look at him. You're supposed to look at him like he's a great protagonist? No! He's probably the realest protagonist of a shut in like this. But, hey. And don't listen to me. Hentai addicted virgin transported to a fantasy world without the same moral standards and repercussions of our modern world is gonna act any different? Here's what happens when a horny weeb gives in to all their intrusive thoughts. You might not keep anyone like Rudy around you, but you've probably encountered someone that's come a bit too uncomfortably close to walking down his path. Yeah, which is why to me, he seems just as real as the characters around him. This is the arc where we get to see him deal with depression from something that has nothing to do with his previous life. So what earth shattering thing could be affecting him. Bullying? The gruesome death of a loved one? Nope. 
Girlfriend troubles. Oh, cheer up, mate. There's plenty of fish in the sea. It seems trivial, but that's why I respect the decision to spend a sizable amount of time exploring it. We forget that even though he was an adult in his previous life, just how emotionally immature he is. We often like to dismiss events that happened in our young years as dumb teenage angst that we've grown past, but shit, man. So much of that stuff sticks with you even if you don't remember it. Maybe your parents said some offhand comment that one time, or a teacher shouted at you for something you did, or, you know, a crush said something mean to you in your most vulnerable moment. Don't go getting the wrong idea. I only came up here because I felt obligated. You what? It's moments like these that can shape the way you act going into adulthood and you probably don't even realize how much you internalized it until it's way too late. You have magic. People can die. People can die from magic, okay? Just, ah, you know? And you can see uh, this through saying. every phase of Rudy's struggle with the scars he's carried on from not just his previous life, but the one he has now as well. Guys, in our most loneliest and desperate moments, we'd like to think that we're fucking Ryan Gosling in our mind's eye, sexily brooding by ourselves in a dark corner, but let's be honest, we're probably closer to Rudy in our darkest times. At first, he just keeps to himself and just deals with it, finds other things to distract him, gets called out, doesn't say anything, eventually lashes Why out, tries Disney? to forget his frustrations with a girl, makes things worse, alienates the people around him before for erupting in the most toxic and self-destructive way possible. You're the worst. I never want to see your face again. You don't see his face again. Okay. Okay. Oh, that man. This is the type of shit people spend years working through. Can you hasten that development? It's not that serious. There's plenty of fish in the sea. You've seen them. It's not worth it. Just go and just end it all like that. That's not worth it. I don't. I was like, that's not worth it when I was watching this. I was like, I, I, I do not condone, but I do understand. And that's why I was glad when the next part of the series drop a piece of the series started playing. I was like, oh, yeah, that's how you're supposed to do. And for a fictional story like this, sure, if you want the instant gratification of seeing someone overcome their internal issues, but like life, there is no easy way to go about this. Not you can tell right, me so that time has passed, but it's a whole other thing to make me feel the time and effort it takes to get through the smallest bit of your trauma. This is the commitment Mishoku Tensei makes that few series are willing to do. When you see character growth in a story, you normally see this person with some kind of flaw, and through a character arc, they realize this flaw, overcome it, grow as a character, and it never Never becomes an issue again. That particular character arc has now come to an end and you know, it's great. It's satisfying. It's by the book good storytelling, but in reality, life that doesn't isn't always as smooth as fiction is. Your mate doesn't give you a single monologue one day and then instantly all the bad things you suddenly realize you want to change about yourself are immediately fixed. Even if you recognize that you want to change, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes commitment. People try, get better, relapse into bad habits, try again, spiral even further down, climb back up, fall back down again, years can pass and some people might never find that drive to keep trying again. Life isn't always a straight, linear upshot of a journey and that's what makes Rudy's story so captivating. It takes the time to show you every aspect of his life journey, not just the parts characters. where he takes a positive step. Some episodes he no, takes one, one step forward, some yeah. he takes three steps yeah. back. There'll be a four episode stint where he makes no progress and doesn't grow as a human being at all but it has enough faith in you to stick with it because it wants you to be here for the long game. Rishoku Tensei's newest arc might not have the world-shaking plot developments or the high-intensity action scenes, but it made me realize what made the series truly special and why the source material was so goddamn long. This is someone's life story, and it fully commits to showing you the entirety of it, through every yes. up and down, through the fast years and the slow years, like yeah. life itself. And because of that, it feels so intimately realistic. You forget that this is a fictional story set in a made-up world. At some points, it felt like I was watching a real biography about a person that really existed. Sometimes I thought it had more in common with an episode of Terrace House that just happened to be set in another world than your typical fantasy story. That's the immersive power this series has, the only series I've oh, ever well, encountered, that can simultaneously so drop my jaw to the floor at a near-death experience so while also making me feel genuine emotional gratification at the sight of a bro popping a boner. By the end of this arc, Rudy really still might part. not be a good person. He might not be the protagonist that deserves our cheers just good yet. Him, but you know what? It still feels good to see a guy get even the smallest W in their lives when they worked hard to get it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why erectile dysfunction is the greatest thing to happen to storytelling in the history of Isekai. Sir, this is a Wendy's. 
Yeah. Being hard could open a lot of doors for you. Proving you're hard could open a lot of doors huh. for me. It's hard to go to work with a boner. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much this month to Alpha Sigma, Author Alpha Curtis X. Hey, I don't know where that last word, but you, you see the purpose that me, Shoko Tensei, serves. So give it a chance. It's actually really good if you haven't seen it. But other than that, appreciate you for being here, especially if you made it to the end. Um, shout out to you. Um, put down in the comments if you made it to the end. Uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe if you're new here. And if you're not, uh, socials here, you know what I'm saying? I feel very special. feel cool. Uh, yeah. Peace.